Hey, it's Anfa, and you're watching Anfa Vlog. Today, we're gonna take a look at the Zenat SubFX Formant Filter. Bear with me. So, you might wonder, what are formants? Uh, I tend to think about formants as fixed EQ curves that are applied onto a sound. For example, our voice operates on formants to convey vowels. I -o. They all are built on the same sawtooth like wave oscillator. Ha uh, uh. But there is a bunch of filters happening in my mouth that change positions and they resonate in different parts of the spectrum, creating a sonic imprint that is then recognizable independent of the note. You can sing an E on E and on E and you can still hear it's an E letter, it's an E vowel, even though the underlying sound, the underlying tone is is it something completely different. So that is a formant in real life. Another real life occurrence of formants are acoustic instruments, because every resonating body has a formant, which is a static resonance, independent of the played notes. For example, an acoustic guitar. Let me get an acoustic guitar. For example, an acoustic guitar has a resonating body. And this body has some shape and proportions that make it resonate at certain frequencies more and less at certain others. So it has a sonic imprint. It has an EQ curve that is applied just because of this box. Same applies to wind instruments and any other real instrument. For example, when I was synthesizing and trying to get a sound of a double bass, I, res I researched the resonance of the double bass body and I used an EQ to put these resonances in to make the illusion better. Anyway, let's now take a look at Zenit SubFX because it has a formant filter built in that you can use to get some quite interesting results. Actually, a lot of very different things that are hard to do otherwise or require some sophisticated external processing. So it's a valuable tool to know about. It's a little bit hard to use. If you ever use a Yamaha DX7, well, that's probably the level of the interface. I hope that the Zen Fusion project uh, will enhance on that because it's a very powerful feature. So I have my Ardor session set up here and Let's just enable the first part. Let's make it louder. Uh, okay, and I will dial in a simple sawtooth wave oscillator. So we have some basic signal to just listen to and assess the, the changes the filters are making. So, you might not have noticed, but SinusFX has a few categories of filters. The basic one is analog, and by default, uh, AdSynth comes with this one and the Lopez filter 2, which is resonating. The Lopez filter 1 is non resonating. You can see this doesn't do anything. So it's almost, so it's also very gentle, as you can see and hear. The LPF 2. Sorry, it has a resonance, which is engaging, engaged by the Q, which is the quality. The higher the quality, the narrower the filter, and the more resonance you get. I hate these bugs. So these are the analog filters. There's a bunch of them. I'm not going to cover everything because it's not about this. There's the state variable filters, which are the same type of basic filters, but they are a different implementation, so they sound different, they behave different, they react different to different inputs. Uh, and we have the formant filter, which is like the separate category on its own. How does it sound? Mm -hmm. 
Right now, it reacts to the velocity of my playing. So to disable this, I'm gonna do velocity sensing amount zero. Now every keystroke has the same filter cutoff. So the same format applied to it. So you can see we can adjust the cue of the whole thing. It also responds to the stages. It gets louder as we go. I'm gonna shift this whole thing two octaves down. So we also have more uh, harmonics to, to look at in the baud line window because this scale is linear. It's not logarithmic, so it's more scientific than musical, but it gets the job done. And I actually, I couldn't find a better spectrogram for real-time operation. If you know of any <laughs> good spectrograms for real-time usage with Jack in Linux that are open source, let me know. Well, this one isn't fully open source either. Like, it's dual licensed and you can't really... That is why it's not, Botline is not in repositories because of the licensing. That's something lacking. If you're a Linux audio developer, please code a real-time audio spectrograph. Let me know so I'll make a shout out about it and test it. So the basic basic thing that th this format filter does right now is applies a static resonance to our signal. Let's bring it back to one stage and make it louder because right now it's very quiet. And hit the edit button. And now we can see the main formant filter window. <sighs> and there is a ton of options here. On the left, we have the graph that shows what resonances we have, how they are positioned, and what we're editing right now. You see we can have up to six vowels, which is every vowel is a different set of formants. Here, uh, a single formant is a single resonance, so you can have any number of formants. You can have two, you can have one, so it's just a single peak filter. If we increase this, we have two, and we have three, four, five, etc. Now, so we have the formants, which is the amount of filters that every vowel has. We have the vowels, and each vowel is a predetermined location set of locations for every formant, so every peak. And we have a sequence, which is a set of vowels in a, in a predefined order that we can use and that, that we can choose using the BS position and that we can choose using the envelope and the LFO. If we change the sequence size to one, we are essentially using just one vowel, no matter what. So now I cannot change this. And an LFO or envelope or LFO won't have any effect. If I make the sequence size of two, we have two vowels to alternate between. And now everything works. Uh, it is very, very sensitive to LFO and envelope changes and to any changes in general. So I'm going to decrease the depth of this, uh, return to the basic values so our, so our envelope isn't doing anything. And now it's still very fast. So I'm going to decrease the frequency. You can see that our LFO is basically our LFO here is basically uh, starting out in the peak, then it's going here to the second vowel, 
uh, and then it's going back and then it's it's going back because the sequence is looping so um, when our LFO got here it was still going low but the sequence was over so it looped back and then the LFO was over so it was started getting back and it was looping looped, looped back to the sequence and then it got back to the reset uh, it's you know it's it's a little bit complicated we can change this by decreasing the depth I hope we can get a simple two states it looks like it's not that easy uh, so I may talk about the slow slow form and slowness 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 and vowel clearness so slowness is basically uh, if you tried calf filter it has a control named inertia and that simply smooths out the input that you give it so if we increase the slowness No. The slowness refreshes with every note hit, so I have to hit another note to hear the effect. So it's basically like a Lopez filter or a slew limiter. Actually, more like a Lopez filter because it creates these, uh, these very smooth curves like when normally you go from A to B and it's a straight line with no slowness you can look at this if we enable a triangle or a ramp up nah. oh no I'm changing settings of not what I wanted not the frequency LFO I wanted the filter LFO let's make it a ramp so with no slowness it can jump from two positions immediately as I increase the slowness it smooths out all this motion the clearness of the vowels is something else is something different it's clamping onto the values it's like if we normally have like vowel 1 and vowel 2 and our LFO is slowly morphing between the, the two the clearness if I make it very high it's gonna the LFO wants to give to the other but it's gonna it's, it will be forced to stay on that first vowel and then when it crosses the line and it's not and it's closer to the other one it's gonna jump immediately so it's avoiding mixing the vowels <laughs> But to hear this, we need to disable the form and slowness because that is applied afterwards. I'm gonna make it a sine wave again. Let's also uh, maybe uh, shift this and make, make it wider and shift it up. Oh, now we can hear it very clearly and see. With zero vowel cleanness, clearness, with zero vowel clearness, we get everything in between the vowels. So the the so the individual formants are interpolating between different vowels on the whole spectrum. And as I increase the clearness, they stay longer in the in the target uh, in the predefined values and then jump quicker between different vowels. Maximum cleanliness.
And then I can smooth it out with the form and slowness. Or that's interesting. So we have two vowels in the sequence, but there are six total because there is from zero to, to five. And we have different formats. We can select different peaks. We can have up to 12. And as you increase the number of the peaks, it's going to get louder. Uh, so I'm going to play a note. Be ready, it's going to be loud. Louder, at least. If I decrease, it's much quieter. Also, if we go with the Q, very low Q, this is 12 formants, and this is one. Much quieter. And we can see that this on this graph, like the resonances build up and they increase the loudness, even though with the lowest quality, the Q, so the highest bandwidth, we don't actually create any recognizable shapes in the spectrum. Here's a spot where the saw wave is audible, but it's speaking. So it's kind of working like a vocoder, or it's producing a vocoder-like sounds, or it can produce some growling, talking bass lines, if you wish. It can also produce some other things. Right now we have just two vowels in this sequence. What if we increase to three? Well, that's super fast. I'm gonna decrease the vowel cleanliness and the slowness, so we have like the raw uh, LFO output. I'm gonna actually dec disable the LFO. Oh, funny. It it was muted in one channel for, for some reason. Oh. I think I found a bug. <laughs> uh, by the way, as you're playing with this, keep in mind that... Um, Resonating filters can be dangerous if you change the cutoff frequencies quickly. And this is something I got from Mark D. Curry, who is the current developer of Zen and SubFX. I had some problems when the filters produced some screaming sounds, like extremely loud sounds. And he explained to me that a digital filter, uh, when you change the cutoff frequency, so you move around the the cutoff knob, or you apply a quick LFO or envelope, and if you increase the quality, so bump up the resonance, it's gonna get unstable and it's gonna produce some extremely loud sounds. And it's natural, it's just the way digital implementations of these filters work. All of them have this problem. So I thought this is a bug in the software, and like you can, you can approach this by trying to limit the amount of motion that the user can introduce or the amount of resonance he can get, but then it limits the creative freedom. So I think it's better to leave it on, but warn the user that he might do something that's gonna hurt. So for an experiment, let's try it. Uh, I'm gonna use a quick LFO. Uh, I'm going to make it super quiet, and then I'm going to bump up the Q slightly, slowly. It's getting louder. You can see? Yeah. I, I left the note because it was getting louder and louder and louder into distortion. Uh, so now I'm going to decrease the Q to uh, sane levels or safe levels, and I'm going to give back the loudness. Yeah. So be careful with quickly moving, highly resonant filters. They can get loud. I figured out that you can create some interesting metallic ringing sounds when you just um, play with the range of the formants in the frequency spectrum. So two controls we didn't talk about yet and are very like interesting is that central frequency and the octave span. 
So center frequency is it's displayed here in the left upper corner. Right now it's at 200 hertz. Uh, this line here is 20,000 hertz. This one is 10,000. So we are just shifting the whole thing in spectrum up and down. And the octave span is the uh, amount of octaves that the whole spectrum covers. So right now we can get up to 10 octaves, which is basically the whole range of human hearing. From 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz, it's just 10 octaves. But if we decrease this... We get something extremely narrow. And if I increase the Q... We can hear and see the individual resonances. And in my idea, that sounds... That sounds super cool. The funny thing, you see, right now, the transitions are all straight lines. We can increase the form and slowness to smooth them out. To make that more organic, interesting. I wonder what happens if we increase the stages. Well, it also decreases the Q. And it is reflected right here, on this graph. By the way, the filters in the NetSubFX have a gain control. So we can compensate with here, and it is also reflected in this graph. But it is generally very quiet right now. we increase the velocity sensitivity we can get a different resonance for every note or if we use the LFO uh, in a random start mode Nice wandering resonances. By the way, you can see that at the high resonance uh, between the peaks, there are also notches. So it's not just, it, it doesn't look the same. <laughs> like you can see that this frequency spectrum here on the baud line display is actually quite different from this approximation here and there there are also notch filters added in between the peaks the resonating peaks so that's very interesting because like you get even more filtering applied than that these 12 peaks and 12 peaks is already a lot not to mention that you can have two of these stacked because you can have uh a formant filter applied on a voice directly here. <laughs> so we can have actually 24 peaks. Let's give it an LFO. <laughs> yeah. So right now we have two formant filters, one after another. And we need to be careful because if they start to 
resonate one on top of each other, they're gonna get very loud. Oh, sorry, that was a high note. Uh, no, I'm not doing this again. So yeah, uh, I think I would like to try making some simple composition or maybe maybe just dialing in a few sounds to make use, practice, show more in practice how this filter works and what it can do. Disable this, let's make a hi-hat out of this sound. So I'm gonna switch the oscillator to white noise so it's just noise. I'm gonna decrease the loudness because it's gonna get, it might get loud. I'm gonna increase the resonance and I will make this narrower so octaves less quarter an octave maybe half hmm i think i should be able to get something higher it looks like no I'm just gonna make a hi hatty sound out of this. We have. Okay, we have the LFO starting with random phase. Every hi hat hit is gonna be different. Mm, I think I would like to introduce some Lopez filter. tame the filter, the, the frequency content a little bit more. Well, we clipped this really hard at some point. Okay, so let's call this one hi-hat. I'm not sure if we will be able to make a kick drum with formant filters. This is actually quite loud, I think. All right, let's make a bass. I will be talking, so enable the keyboard. Let's give ourselves a new patch. And let's make this a sawtooth wave, of course, because sawtooth waves are great for exposing the quality of the filter because they contain all the harmonics, odd and even. So they are very harmonically rich. Okay, we have the oscillator. By default, we have the Lopez filter resonating slightly to tune, turn down. And you can see that even turning it up all the way still gives us some loss in high frequency content, even at 16 kilohertz. And 18? Yeah. Oh, maybe because I had the velocity sensing. Ah, yeah. Okay, it was because of the velocity sensing. So I disabled the velocity sensing. Let's change this to formant. Let's try program a a formant sequence with just two formants. Let's make this more resonant. Let's turn this down. I'm going to... Yeah, we have vowel number zero. Vowel number one. That is probably vowel number zero because they are very close together, but we can verify this. I'm going to change the B position. Let's make the sequence size of one. Yeah, and this is the vowel number zero. We can change the sequence. Uh, and we can set up the sequence size and we can set up the sequence. Step. So sequence position zero. This is the first item in the sequence, and we can assign a vowel number. If we change this to a two, this is going to be vowel number, sorry, vowel number one, because the first one is the zeroth. So right now, this is the vowel. This is what we have next. The fourth and the fifth which is the six. So yeah, if we make this sequence size, okay, we can have up to seven. 
in the sequence size. But we have only six vowels, so then we would have to repeat some vowel in the sequence. So I'm going to make it six. So let's go to vowel number zero. Now, which vowel do we have right here? And I would like to find the position where we have the vowel number zero. This is not it. I think this is it. Yeah, so this is vowel number zero in the sequence, which is assigned to vowel number zero in the bank of vowels. So you can mess with this. You can add some more formants. Let's try to make a classic growl with just two positions. two formants. So an extremely simple example. Let's just make one vowel up, uh, sorry, one formant low, other formant high. You can also change their amplitude. I guess we're not cleanly on this first vowel. And let's make the second one just both formants in the middle or very close together. Oh yeah, I don't want them crossing, so I'm gonna make the zero, the first one, lower than the second one. You see, this is very clunky, it's hard to manipulate. Let's now add an LFO. Yeah, this is what I wanted. Let's make it slower so we can verify if it works. Okay. Uh, the problem is uh, our LFO depth is like clipped with reflection onto this smaller sequence, so we need to decrease the depth of our LFO. Okay, just a little bit. Let's try size 5, depth. Okay. This looks good because we have the whole sequence from vowel 0 to vowel 1 and back and no bouncing around. Now we can play with the frequency. I'm gonna make sure we don't move the depth. That's cool. I'm going to decrease the Q so we can hear more of the note. No, it's it's real quiet. So the funny thing is, right now we can automate this because Zenit SubFX exposes the global filter cutoff, which is applied to these filters. So if I disable the LFO completely, and we have no motion whatsoever, uh, I can just get back to Ardor, and let's just... Okay, I guess the note is a little bit too low. Let's record some extremely simple example. I'm gonna make Ardor full screen for a while. Uh, okay, let's give ourselves a metronome. Right, let's cut out. The last two bars are what I want to use. Uh, okay, I was a little bit early on that note, and you can see it's it starts before the bar line, so it, it was 
it was silenced. Okay, uh, so this is actually a beat. Let's duplicate this seven times. Yeah! Awesome. <laughs> uh, we need a kick and we need a... Nah, just kick will do. Uh, but first, let's play around with the automation for the filter cutoff. We can also automate the filter resonance. And let's just use the touch function. Loop over this. Okay, the cool thing about touch is you can see if I don't touch it, it doesn't record. But if I do, it does. So, so it's very nice for this kind of stuff because you can like write in record the automation moves one by one without destroying your other work. Uh, I think I'm gonna increase the clean, clean, no, the clearness, the slowness. Because, okay, uh, let's just find our, yeah, here it is. Let's play it. Yeah. So this is cool because we can actually build a longer sequence and a more complicated formant. And we have a few filters in one with a single automation control that we can also smooth out. This is, this is really cool. <laughs> I wanna, I don't know, uh, make a kick drum just to, um, I'm gonna, I'm holding control and middle mouse button and dragging this to duplicate the region and move it vertically. Like, because control duplicates and mid middle mouse button drags between tracks without shifting in time. I'm gonna delete these notes, leave just one. And I'm going to make a kick drum. And we'll try to make it with a formant filter for the exercise. Okay, we have our MIDI notes. I'm gonna try and make it out of white noise. Let's see what we can do. So, uh, not sound, but white. Right now we have the default resonating Lopez filter. And let us use a single formant. Let's make it highly resonant and make a sequence of two. And the first vowel, we have it high and the second we wanna have it low. Yeah, we can have it even higher in the first. Now we can shift this all thing down and we can use it. <laughs> an envelope. I'm gonna disable the cleanness and slowness so we can easier see what, what's committing. Okay. <laughs> well, that's... Oh, because I'm having the velocity sensing. Okay, now we have consistent notes. Okay, I managed to tune the envelope and the bass position. Maybe this is the BS, bass position. Now we can slow this or smooth it out with the slowness. But we need to make it lower. Oh, I'm afraid it's not gonna go low enough. Will it? Oh dear.
Yeah. Yeah, no, the stretch is not doing anything for us here. Whoa. I messed something up. What do we have? Oh, we have some low frequency. Maybe it is usable. This is about 50 hertz. That should be usable, but how do we get there? Maybe I had so much trouble because I have this sequence stretch and it makes all the controls very sensitive. Oh, that is usable as a kick drum, uh, at least regarding the spectrum. Oh, yeah, that's deep. Let's make it more resonant. I actually, I think I need headphones to verify if the bass is there. Because I can't hear it. Let's listen. Yeah, it's very low. It's definitely a deep kick drum. Uh, I think I need to decrease the slowness. To make this... Actually, it's very, very quiet. I'm afraid you might not hear it very well. Whoa, that's distorting. So, let's add a, an envelope. That, this doesn't do anything right now. Okay, there's our kick drum. Our kick drum made it with a form and filter. Let's distort it slightly. For taste. It's, fi it's funny how unstable it is. Because we are making it out of white noise, so it's random. So some notes start with, with a peak. Yeah, <laughs> we managed to make a kick drum. I have company. Okay, uh, let's duplicate this kick drum seven times and listen to our sequence. Okay, I think that's it. Um, I hope I've covered the form and filter thoroughly. It is a little bit of a mystery. It's hard to use to custom program, but you can see it's not impossible and you can wrap your head around and make it some cool sounds. So give it a shot. And if you have any questions or suggestions about this episode or the future ones, if you have any ideas what I should do next, what do you have problems with, what would you want to learn about in the Linux and open source audio world, let me know, leave that in the comments, and I will see you in the next video. Bye! Resonance.
Okay, that's for B-roll.